So let's get started with MuleSoft tutorial. What exactly is MuleSoft, Victor? Well, Mule is a lightweight enterprise service bus with its integration framework provided by MuleSoft. The platform is Java-based, but can connect between any other platforms and applications such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and many more. Wow, it sounds like you can connect to pretty much anything. I'm really excited to see how this works. Let's get started, shall we? Sure, let me jump into that. So let's get started to create your first application. So this is the welcome page. I'm just going to close it off. Uh, then you're going to create a file, uh, new uh, mule project. Over here, uh, you're going to type uh, what's your project name first. All right. So I'm going to type uh, mule soft free tutorial. Uh, so you might be hearing the typing noise. That's because of the keyboard. Okay. Uh, all right. So now get into the uh, to the pro this is the project name. So you can define any project uh, you want. And now you can see as Megna highlighted, uh, you, you can deploy into the different type of cloud hubs. So it can be cloud hub or it can be on prem. So what cloud hub means? Uh, it's provided by the MuleSoft, so which is runs pretty much on top of uh, the AWS. I hope you guys heard of the AWS, which is pretty much booming now in the market. So so they, they deploy all the all the servers and containers on AWS and they allow you to uh, deploy so uh, it depends on the enterprise requirement you can either opt for cloud hub which is a bit of expensive otherwise you can um, go for on-prem you can just run on-premise all right so that's a bit of an advanced concept I would say so as of now uh, let's uh, uh, I will give you more insight around how you can create uh, an application all right then uh, click next uh, over here you can see uh, the, the JDK or the Java version so I have uh, installed 1.8 uh, so which is the mandatory uh, prerequisites for the uh, for this uh, mule studio so you can use 1.7 as well which is backward compatible uh, so then you can uh, click finish that just creates a project for you uh, there you go I just created one test project I'm just going to close it off so as you can see now this is the palette where you do your real-time uh, work I mean like all the application work all right so I'm just gonna clear up this one uh, so as you can see uh, as uh, Megna was saying uh, MuleSoft got literally a whole bunch of connectors you can connect to anything you name it they have a connector uh, just to give you a few examples just like Google contacts right so you can import all your Google contacts and uh, do a, any any manipulation you want or if you want to push it to any of the system database you can connect to almost any of the database they have FTP file uh, generic connectors uh, you have JMS uh, Jetty uh, MongoDB Magento uh, then they got like SFTP I mean like they got a whole bunch of connectors like Salesforce uh, if you don't find something that is not available so what people do is normally they connect using a web service call all right so it can be again rest or it can be soap so so it really depends on your on your requirement all right so and they have a whole bunch of functionalities like uh, scopes like forage uh, all the like uh, algorithm function like mathematical functions that you use normally on your IDs alright so as of now easiest way to we as we're gonna doing a sample application we're not gonna uh, uh, deep dive into into any of the complex uh, connectors we're gonna start with a simple HTTP right we were all you know uh, HTTP or HTTPS right so you connect uh, you send a request to Google or you open up your Facebook page that's when the HTTP comes uh, so HTTP HTTPS comes actually nowadays so if you just type HTTP right over here that brings up your connector so you, all you need to do is drag and drop see it's that easy you just drag and drop and that's it so now you can see now why wait why there's a red mark over here so what it means is when you drag and drop a connector it needs to be configured so that where it needs to connect to it's as simple as that like when you are typing on Google uh, or you go to a browser you need to know where you want to connect to right so if you want to go to Google you type google.com hit enter that takes you to google.com so similarly uh, you need to define your listener configuration over here where you want to like what your configuration where you need to connect to all right it's pretty easy as of now so uh, I would say the display name I just leave as HTTP but if you want to connect to let's say on your own system all right let's say you have a HTTP Salesforce system so you want to name it as Salesforce connector Salesforce HTTP connector that makes it like a complete uh, sentence or uh, also it is a best uh, developers practice I would say to name to give proper naming convention according to your organization or just follow the developers guide all right so I'm just gonna give uh, local host because I'm just connecting uh, to my local host all right and uh, then you go to add configuration right over here that brings up a new screen over here is there is a port number it's like 8081 and you are allowing all the traffic all right so 0000 which means you are allowing all the traffic over here you can also specify 
uh, like particular host if you are if you're not uh, opening up uh, your ports uh, to the, to all of the internet if you have something like a private IP you can specify the name so it only allows the traffic only from those IP and the port numbers also you can configure HTTPS uh, so as uh, we're not going to cover HTTPS as of now it, it needs a bit of more technical information around it so you're going to cover up only HTTP Again, base path you can specify or not specifying the base path. If you come down, you'll see a few uh, more options. Uh, you can skip it because of HTTP. And over here, one of the important aspect is uh, timeout. So, like, if you send a request, how much time you want to wait for that request to get a response back? All right. So this is default again, uh, thirty thousand uh, milliseconds. But you, you, if you want to increase it, or you can decrease it based on your which end applications you want to connect to. All right. So I'm gonna just click OK. So once you do it, it just uh, turns green as you can see. Okay, the error must be gone away now. Okay, as you can see, it's all green now. All right, so now uh, coming to the path. So path, which means, let's say if you're going to facebook.com, that's your base URL. But if you go to your messenger, right, so it becomes facebook.com slash messenger. So similarly, if you want to allow directly to your path, you can do that. But if you want to, if you want to uh, something customized, let's say get mule request, request so this is how you customize your path all right so now it's done so now you might be uh, wondering so what's next so we want to set something right i mean like we get a request we want to send a response back so we need to set a payload which is like pretty much like a variable assignment so if you drag and drop a payload it's that easy so over here uh, what you can do is like uh, uh, just specify welcome not hello world you can say hello world but yeah, i'll just say welcome to the mule soft tutorial all right so this is the display message basically which is going to show when you send a request you get this response back all right so set payload again over here but you can but you can name it i mean like if you want to name let's say i'm just I'm naming this um, mule soft tutorial again mule soft tutorial all right. Uh, so if you want to, if you're sending a payload, for an example, you're getting a response from a Twitter feed, or you are getting from a Facebook post. So you can say, I'm sending a payload for the Facebook post. All right. So that's how the naming convention pretty much works. I, I believe uh, you guys are aware about that. So now uh, that's um, all done and dusted. Now you might be wondering, okay, I want to know how these flows really work in runtime. So how do you know that how it's working in the runtime? You have all uh, design your application so how do you know like once you deploy it how do you know the, how the flow has been working behind the scene so for that uh, they have a really cool feature called logger so it's pretty much like j4 logger they use in behind the scene j4 logging mechanism so you can just drag and drop the logger right over here so what it does it logs all your information how the requests have been going through all right so if you click on the log uh, it displays the name i'm just leaving on default name but if you want to change you can change again if you have more applications you can define the name all right so the logging levels uh, by default is on default info level but if you want to debug more if you see uh, come across uh, sometimes your application is running into error you want to debug on your development in moment you can set uh, the debug level to error or debug so the, the the more you increase you get more number of uh, more information more trace on your logs all right but just be aware it put dumps a, a whole lot of um, a whole lot of uh, data into your files so make sure you're not putting these things in production and if you are doing it uh, you need it immediately you need to ensure that all your file systems are available all right just to avoid any surprise so now you're all all ready to go uh, in terms of the application is ready so you, so you can just save it right over here uh, then you can just deploy so you can, uh, right click on it uh, go to the run as mule application so what that will do is like now deploy the application to the local uh, local mule ESP because I have installed my local machine so it deploys to a local uh, system but if you are running on cloud hub or your on-prem so it, you, you can just define your connection parameters and you can just uh, deploy it over there as I'm doing it for the first time it takes me a while to uh, load off all the like warm up the server and deploy the application as you can see it's now it's deployed it's quite fast uh, because everything is uh, inbuilt on the inbuilt JVM it, it loads up quite easily so and that's probably one of the advantage uh, of um, using uh, mule ESB which is uh, lightweight comparative to the, any other integration platforms available in the market all right so now we are all deployed to the application we are ready to uh, see the how we can uh, how it really works uh, to test the application all right so you guys excited to see so let's go to localhost 
uh, what the parameter did I set it here? Let's go back. Okay, it's mule get request. Okay. So if you go back to the screen over here, local host, put the path for here. Remember this one. There you go. Welcome to MuleSoft tutorial. So that's the output we got, right? So now you might be wondering, okay, so what is the log now? All right. So go back to the MuleSoft AnyPoint Studio again. Go to the console. There you go. Here is the log. So as you can see, th these are the payload. This is the MuleSoft free tutorial. This is the listener, and this is when you got the request. And this is our uh, like the browser which I is using, right? As you're using a Chrome browser, 64-bit. Uh, so. You, this is the outbound scope property. So you you can play around with all these things um, uh, at a, like at a, if you are using some advanced uh, mechanism to to capture some information. So you can play around with all these things. All right. So that's it, guys, from my side. So I hope uh, you like the uh, video and learn how you can create your MuleSort application. Now I'm gonna hand over uh, to Meghna, so she will uh, wind it up uh, from there. Hot damn, Victor! Gotta be the mules mule to mule it out now. Now, guys, it's your turn. What are your views on MuleSoft? Do you want to be MuleSoft Mule 2? I would really love to hear from you. Do let me know what you feel by leaving a comment below. And thanks for watching. Good day.